Now let's get down to business. I want you to notice that I am wearing my uniform this morning because it is this uniform we wear the bat in the battle against the enemy. But more importantly, we wear this uniform when we're training to go to battle. Why? Because in training to go to battle, we discover who we are, how we are built, and what we need to do to overcome the enemy. The enemy that we're going to speak about today is ignorance, dysfunction, and a self-fulfilling prophecy of failure in our lives. You see, the scripture says we war not against flesh and blood, but principles and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. The high places today is your mind. The high places today is your erroneous thinking that gets in the way of your progress and your success. The high place today is when the enemy tells you that you can't that you will never, that it is impossible. That's the enemy. And I'm going to make a disclaimer here. My speech might today might make you a little uncomfortable if you're not comfortable with yourself. My speech might make you a little uncomfortable if you're too comfortable with yourself and your parents, your grandparents, your forefathers and mothers have sent you here to get an education that will not only benefit you, but break down generational curses of poverty, choice, poor choices, and pain from generations of your families that need you to be successful. You see, my subject deals with the possibilities that maybe, just maybe, you are the first in your family to graduate from college. You see, my subject deals with the prospects that maybe the school that has given you a chance to break out from that dysfunction and from the dysfunctional environment that you came from, that you should be a little bit more grateful. My subject today will tap into your mind because you're going to need every bit of your mind to hold off the demons that bring you here from your environment called low self-esteem, low self-worth, and the self-fulfilling attitude of failure. So my subject today is, you're not a product of your environment, you're a product of your thinking. Oh, I'm going to say that again because I don't want you to miss that. You see, you're not a product of your environment, you're a product of your thinking. You see, until you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will never change. You see, environments don't have thoughts, people do. Environments don't make people do bad things, people do. Environments don't throw their lives away, people do. You see, it is your thinking that will propel you to the levels of success or failure in this life. It is your thinking that will either keep you in a dysfunction or, keep, or help you ascend to dignity, honor and respect for the opportunity that this institution is giving you. It is your thinking that will allow you to be self-aware enough to understand that the future of your babies depend on what you're doing in this next four years. It is your thinking that won't allow you to return home in the same horizontal mindset vertical, horizontal mindset that you left there with. It is your thinking that will have you choose friends who have your best interest in heart as juxtaposed to those who live in squalor and the dysfunctional excrement called mediocrity. It is your thinking that won't allow you to fail even though you are operating way outside of your comfort zone. It is your thinking that won't allow you to fail even though you feel uncomfortable, depressed, and sometimes not worthy of the opportunity that you're suffocating from. It is your thinking that won't allow you to fail even though you can't stand your professor. 
your coach, the business office, because they are pushing you towards your potential. It is because of your thinking, it makes you understand that the professors, the coaches, the business office, are in their profession and living their dream. Now it's time for you to live yours. It is your thinking that allows you to know that your mama and daddy can't really afford to send you there because some of them are living from paycheck to paycheck to keep you there. It is your thinking that makes you get up and study. Listen to me. Even though you're unmotivated, unsure and uninterested. It is your thinking that allows you to transcend being unmotivated, unsure and uninterested because you know that your family is depending on you. You see, it is your thinking that allows you to foresee the future and those who are seeking to hire you won't hire you because you are unmotivated, unsure, and uninterested because you didn't leave Jarvis Christian College with a degree. No, I got to say that again because that was too powerful for you to miss. You see, it is your thinking that makes you get up and study even though you are unmotivated, unsure, and uninterested. Because you understand through the process of cognition, these things will affect you the rest of your life and will sentence your children to poverty, dysfunction, and dilapidation. You see, you should understand through your thinking that you won't get hired, unmotivated, unsure, and uninterested because you didn't leave that institution with a degree. You see, is the man who thinks and the man who does it, are they alike? By no means. The man or woman that does not think is like cattle or even less. You see, you are not a product of your environment. You are a product of your thinking. Cattle only does what their environment allows them to. But you, young Jarvisonian, you are a student and a human being. You have the ability to transcend your environment through thinking, through actions, and through your willingness never to quit. My subject today is you're not a product of your environment. You're a product of your thinking. Now, let me help you think through the process. You see, let me help you with a plan to carry out and begin your thinking anew that you will break through this chain, these chains of dysfunction. First, you have to have a philosophy. Second, you have to have a, a, a based on that philosophy, developing an action plan. Thirdly, based on that action plan, you develop a mission for life. You see, most people die at 25, but they're not buried until they're 75. Why? Because when things get hard, they quit. When things get tough, they make excuses. When things are not going their way, they blame the institution, the president, racism, sexism. They blame the professors. They bl even blame their own parents. But the blame and the responsibility is yours. God made you an, an incredible human being. He gave you the ability to think. He gave you the ability to transcend worlds. Hmm. He gave you the ability to be anything that you really want to be, but it takes hard work. It takes thinking. It takes being uncomfortable. There's an old saying, even a turtle has to stick his neck out to make progress. Oh, I'm going to say that again because I don't want you to, 